Well, y'all who watch precision hunting on a regular basis, you know that uh, Panther Hollow is one of my favorite places to be. And Joe and Claudia Matkin, uh, we look forward to them every year and it's just a joy to be back out there with them. McWhorter Custom Rifles presents Welcome back, folks. This week, Blondie and I are headed to deep south Texas to hunt with our good friends, Joe and Claudia Matkin of Panther Hall of Whitetails. Joe's been sending us pictures of big bucks all summer long. This is a trip we really look forward to. Here we go. Precision Hunting TV is brought to you by McWhorter Custom Rifles, McMillan Fiberglass Stocks, Swarovski Optic, Hornady Ammunition, and Borden Accuracy. It's October again, and it's time to head back to Panther Hollow in Dilly, Texas, to Mr. Joe Matkin's place. And I gotta make sure that my 6.5 PRC is dead on balls accurate, as usual. I don't expect it to be anything else. I sighted it in. So she's gonna shoot 500 yards. This one, this PRC here is built on a board in action with a Brooks barrel, uh, a number four. Uh, she is shooting suppressed this year because she's acts like she's losing her hearing. She doesn't hear anything I say anymore, apparently. And it's got what? a Swarovski X5i 5 to 25 on it. We've got a, a Hawkins uh, 25 MOA rings on it, Hawkins uh, bottom metal, and that's our Apex LR stock. With a trigger tech set at about a pound and a half. So, you ready? I'm ready. All right, you gonna put your ears on since it's suppressed? I don't have to. All right, I'll be good. All right. So let's shoot 500. Give me five and a half MOA. And it looks like you got about a 75% value of five mile an hour wind. Give me just over half a minute right. Height's good. Let's shoot it one more time. <clears throat> yeah. Give give me three quarters right on this one. Send it. There you go. Oh, yeah. High shoulder, dropped in his tracks. Denise kills another deer bigger than mine, more than likely, right? Probably. <laughs> All right, so I'm uh, I'm hunting with a seven SPRC. That's a 6.5 PRC necked up to seven millimeter. Uh, this is on our new Peak stock, which we, we really like. It's got a discreet beaver tail four end, uh, negative cone. This one's got a cheek piece, got a real slight toe angle. Uh, great for great for long range shooting. Uh, this gun's built on a board in action on the peak stock. This one's got a number five Brux, uh, 26 inches long, got the Hawkins three port per side muzzle brake. Hawkins rings, Hawkins bottom metal, and uh, Trigger Tech trigger set at about a pound. This is a diamond trigger. So, <clears throat> wind looks about the same. You ready? I'm ready. Well, that'll do. That's exactly where I was aiming, and that's where I'd shoot a big South Texas whitetail if he steps out in one of Joe Sendero's about 500 yards. So hopefully this year I'll kill one bigger than you know who. I doubt it, but I'm gonna try. So here we go. Y'all ready to go? You ready to go? I'm ready. All right, Panther Hollow, here we come. Panther Hall of Whitetails is one of our just absolutely best trips of the year. Every year we look forward to going down there and not only spending time with Mr. Joe and Miss Claudia, but for the giant whitetails that he's taunting us with, sending me pictures all summer long. Texas is the birthplace of trophy whitetail management. For decades and decades, trophy managers in Texas have been producing some of the biggest bucks in the country. It's caught on in the Midwest, of course, and a lot of people are doing it. We're even doing it in Georgia here. But one of the best operations I've ever seen 
is our good friend Joe Mack and Joe and Claudia. They have a, a just a, a, a magnificent place. Big acreage, huge bucks, uh, a crazy feeding program where they feed in protein and cotton seed. They've got a huge uh, irrigated alfalfa field on the place. Just everything that a trophy buck needs to reach its maximum potential. Panther Hall is set up on MLD, which means you can start hunting as early as October the 1st and you can go all the way into February. Very highly managed program and Joe makes the most of it. This year we decided to go in mid-October. Uh, it's going to be hot, it's going to be tough, the rattlesnakes are going to be out still, but that's when we wanted to go. Joe had a couple of big bucks that he thought he had pretty much pinned down that we were going to try to get after. So this is one of the trips that Denise and I always do together. You know, our good friends Joe and Claudia, we look forward to seeing them on top of the deer hunting. So, you know, Denise always kills a bigger deer than me, but this year I'm hoping it's going to be different. This segment is brought to you by Borden Accuracy, makers of the most accurate custom hunting actions on the market. Manufactured in the USA to true bench rest tolerances. Borden Accuracy equals success. I've made it to Panther Hollow in Dilly, Texas. Always a great place to be. Look forward to this every year. Made it out here in time today, flew into San Antonio, gonna go get in the blind. Already been looking at some trail camera pictures with Mr. Joe, the master, and um, got a few deer in mind if they happen to come out. It's kind of warm today, but uh, you never know what can happen at Panther Hollow. The man's got some really big deer. First afternoon out at Panther Hollow, it's pretty warm, but we're still seeing a good many deer. Um, mostly younger bucks, which are certainly not on the list, and, but not too far in the hunt, this Muley Fork buck comes out. Um, he was a nice buck. He's one that Joe was hoping for his, for his family to maybe take that season, so he was not on our list. Toward the end of our hunt that evening, this really big buck comes out. And it took me a minute to you know, take a good look at him with the Swarovski binoculars, make sure he was a mature buck, and get a good look at his points and his, um, all his antlers. And I decided, yeah, this buck is definitely something I would be excited about and wanna take him, and he's gone. He didn't show back up, but I was very optimistic. I got plenty of time to hunt this buck, and I feel very confident he'll show back up. We gotta have brunch. Day two opens up with a gorgeous sunrise, an absolutely beautiful morning. And wouldn't you know it, the one deer that I'm not gonna shoot, the Muley Fort Buck, he's gonna show back up. We hunted the whole morning, saw plenty of deer, um, kept waiting for that big buck to step out from the evening before but he was a no-show. Thank you. 
feel very comfortable sitting here that we are counting on tonight. Back out in the same blind that afternoon, um, early, had some does and some young bucks out. And um, first decent buck that shows up is my big fella. He came back. Precision Hunting TV is also brought to you by Extreme Wildlife Adventures, Hoff Power Auto and Outdoor Stores, Surge Pro by Biofac Crop Care, Ultimate Antler Deer Feed, Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue, and Mesquite Creek Taxidermy. Welcome back, folks. Today we're going to talk about something that comes into play on longer shots, and it's spin drift. And Keith's going to tell you what spin drift is, because I could tell you, but he'll put it better, and he wouldn't like what I'm saying anyway, so go ahead. So spin drift is really going to start to affect your shots 500 yards and beyond. You know, at your greater distances, it really plays effect when you compound it with Coriolis and your wind as well. So you're talking with this current rifle that you're shooting that 6.5 caliber, it's gonna be about 6.7 inches of spin drift itself. And you know, simply put, you know, it's the spin drift, you have the right hand twist barrel. When it comes out, it's gonna have, you know, a slightly upward and right angle to it. Yaw repose, the yep. repose. Yep. So as it's turning, wind shear is pushing it off to the right hand side. And spin drift is really gonna be controlled by the caliber you're shooting, how fast it's traveling, all that stuff is gonna come into play and affect this spin drift. So we're gonna talk about this rifle specifically, which is what you're shooting today. But it, uh, 6.5 PRC, this was on a board and action, got a Brux number four barrel on it. Uh, it's got our peak stock on it, trigger tech trigger, Hawkins muzzle brake, Hawkins bottom metal, and it's got a Suaro uh, 318 by 50 on here, uh, X5i. So, uh, we're okay. dialed up to our thousand yard already, so. Yep. So we're gonna do a demonstration at a thousand yards uh, on the board up there. The wind's really light, so we should get a good demonstration of what's going on. Um, at that distance, you should have about, six, like I said, 6.7 inches of spin drift. There's also gonna be two inches of Coriolis, you know, to take into effect. I will touch on Coriolis in a later segment. So let's go ahead and get behind the rifle and go ahead and demonstrate what's going on there, Alan. All right, Alan. Wind right to the left, about two. Yeah, about two mile an hour. So we'll take that out of, out of, out of account. All right, here we go. Excellent. So I didn't hold for any spin drift and I ended up about 10 inches right. So. All right, here we go. Now we're gonna hold, taking into account the spin drift. All right, well that wasn't, the wind picked up a little bit on that one. I ended up, and I'm about a quarter minute high. Uh, this, this rifle's probably sped up a little bit, but the other, the other shot was a quarter minute high too, but the wind sped up, they ended up about a quarter minute left, but that's still about a 10 minute, about a 10, uh, 10 inch differential and that's your spin drift, right? Hey, that's your spin drift, Coriolis, and also like another reason why you're, you know, a little bit high was another aerodynamic jump, you know, that wind coming from the right, right hand side, which is something that we cover in the class and talk about that. So with that being said, you know, like on your first shot, you were holding for just the wind itself, letting spin drift and Coriolis take its, take its course. That's right. Next shot, you're taking the held for both wind and the uh, Coriolis, so that way, uh, and the wind, so that way, you know, your shot ended up being, you know, right, pretty, pretty well on there. Dead but elk, dead deer. Dead elk, dead deer, but it, you know, it highlights the importance of if, you know, you don't, are not accounting for that, it is going to definitely cause for a miss. But the good thing is, is like your ballistic range finder, you know, it is going to account for that, give you That's the hold right. for that, you know, along with your wind and everything. 
So learn to trust your equipment. It's going to get you there with no issues. So that's our downrange tip. Spin drift is something to consider on longer shots. Brought to you by Keith and Allen and McWhorter Custom Rifles. Precision Hunting TV is also brought to you by McWhorter True Precision Long Range Hunting and Shooting School, Tacticam, Leo Photo USA, Sig Sauer, Trigger Tech, Brux Barrels, and Hawkins Precision. This segment is brought to you by Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue, Real Texas Barbecue. Back out in the same blind that afternoon, um, early, had some does and some young bucks out, and um, first decent buck that shows up is my big fella. He came back. Would you call that character or what? What a gorgeous, gorgeous animal. That flyer right there, the first time I saw it, it, uh, it grabbed my attention. Beautiful South Texas buck here in Dilly, Texas at Panther Hollow Whitetails. I've said it many times, Joe Matkin knows how to grow some awesome, awesome bucks. Saw this giant last, last evening on the first set and I waited just a little too long to pull the trigger. And he stepped away from us. Didn't see him at all this morning. We sat in the same blind. And uh, Joe brought us right back this afternoon. We think they fed all night last night, possibly with that really bright, almost full moon. So he waited a good while to come out this evening, but he sure did. And uh, from a quarter rifle, 6.5 PRC, put him on the ground, heard the smack. Got a can on the end of that barrel, so it is uh, it's really neat to hear that, that smack that loud and him going straight down. What an amazing creature right here. Thank you. Another bang flop at Panther Hollow. Joe loves to see these MCRs put the deer on the ground at his place. Carla and James from Mesquite Creek were planning to have a steak dinner with us that night, so um, how much better does it get than to have your taxidermist meet you out in the field and help load up your deer? James and Carla at Mesquite Creek Taxidermy are true artists world-class artist in the world of taxidermy. And um, a big part of my trip to Panther Hollow is getting to take my deer to their place.
we, we definitely want to turn him a little bit to his left, just like your field photos. Mm -hmm. It'll show that big kicker out the back. Yeah. And I think it'll silhouette those, those forks and kickers yeah. on his left side. Too. Yeah. Awesome. We can do a, a semi-sneak if that's what you want to do. I know we've done a bunch of wall pedestals for you guys. But they're in the so past. beautiful. Yeah, they show a lot more action, a lot more turn. Yeah, just I more like stuff, those. Just stuff we can't show on a regular semi-sneak because that deer's not doing enough. So over the years, we've had the opportunity to use a lot of taxidermists, and there have been some good ones, but nobody compares to James and Carla. They're world-class taxidermists. Their facility they have now, their brand new facility, is just loaded with trophy buck after trophy buck after trophy buck. All of them look like they're fixing to come back to life and run off. It's an amazing facility. These folks have really got the taxidermy figured out. They do everything from uh, Texas white tails to African stuff. Just to go in to this facility and be able to look around for a couple hours is just amazing and we'll look forward to it again next year.